Hello, hello, and welcome back to my Chanel. Welcome back to my Chanel. Chanel. Please start laughing now if you haven't already. My name is Lara, if you don't know me already, and I have received a little bit of constructive criticism from my grandmother that I need to start to speak slower. This is going to prove to be a challenge, but I will try my best. So for this next video, I'm going to do another dress like a painting, but do it street style, which I did for Girl with a Pearl Earring. Now I'm going to be doing for John Singer Sargent's painting of Rosina Ferrara. I don't think this painting has a name. I think it's just called Portrait of Rosina Ferrara. So before I go on to how I recreated the look, like last time, and do a little lookbook, I'm going to talk about the history behind this specific portrait or all of Sargent's Rosina Ferrara portraits and give you a little bit of historical background, artistic background. Maybe you'll learn something about this new painter. Maybe you'll learn something about her his model, so Rosina, please indulge me because I find talking about this extremely enjoyable. So John Singer Sargent was an American painter and he was one of the most renowned painters in the late 19th century, early 20th century. He was born in Florence in Italy to American parents and he moved a lot um, throughout his lifetime. So even though he was technically American because his parents were American, he was more of a European and he moved so much that he never quite fit in a single country. In America, he was like the sophisticated European. Um, in France, he was like the expatriate, you know, like a fancy painter and stuff. Um, in London, he was this radical French painter. One thing that is particularly interesting of this painter and his paintings overall was that he tried like if you look at his painting from when he started out in the 1870s until when he was be before he died in the early 20th century he tried very many different styles impressionism naturalism realism and he kind of made a specific like his own mix even though all of his paintings were different styles, he added like a touch of spontaneity, a touch of modernity, kind of. And I think partly the reason for this was that, first of all, this was the turn of the 20th century, which means that it was an era of total change and in a way chaos too. So if you think about it, you've got um, the invention of electricity, trains, uh, the invention of the telephone, uh, planes, airplane. The first airplane, by the way, flew on the 17th of December 1903. And the reason I know this is because that's the day of my birthday. I'm, I wasn't born in 1903. I was born in 1998, but I was born in the 17th of December. I hate how I had to think for a moment what year I was born. Weird. So what I'm trying to say is that he stretched his abilities at this time where there was a lot of social change, you know, social classes were changing, um, the industry, you know, you've got the industrial revolution, a lot of stuff was going on. And with this better modern transport with airplanes and trains, and you didn't have to send telegrams anymore, you could just pick up the phone and call someone. Um, it was a lot easier to have this kind of broader perception of the world. And I feel, I actually feel a little bit like Sergeant myself. He felt like he'd never really belonged anywhere. He was fluent in English, German, French and Italian and because I said before he had like this mix of identities never really belonging anywhere so that added a little bit of objectivity to all of his paintings. In the summer of 1878 Sargent had already finished his training in as an artist in a French school in Paris. I can't remember the name of the school. I uh, will place it somewhere. He finished his studies and he went to the island of Capri. He was already a successful, relatively successful artist. He had already done a couple of exhibitions, so he had a promising career. And he went to Capri because, first of all, 
the Victorians. So I know it's not the Victorian era anymore. This is Edwardian, um, I think, or not. Is it Victorian? Yeah, the Victorians made it a trend to go to the beach. So before the Victorian era, there were beaches, but just no one went to them. At least not in the way that we do today, that you go to the beach and you uh, sunbathe and you swim. So people didn't do that. Which, like for a modern mind, that seems kind of weird. But, you know, the Victorians were like, huh, we've got a perfectly lovely beach next door. Why don't we swim there and make it a holiday thing? Hmm. So Sergeant was like, you know what? I'm gonna go to Capri at the time. Capri was a relatively unknown island off the coast of Italy, Naples. And well, today is like this big resort for celebrities and rich people. But at the time it was kind of like a solitary place for artistic people to go and work on their craft and with their inspiration. So he goes to Capri and he befriends Frank Hyde. And this is another English artist, painter, who introduced him to Rosina Ferrara when they were in his, I think they met at his studio, so Frank Hyde's studio, who, which was in an abandoned monastery. Like, how cool is that? I want a studio in an abandoned monastery. I need one. Rosina Ferrara had already been painted by other artists like Frank Hyde and the French Edward, Edward Vaux. Um, so Sargent gets there and he decides to make Rosina his muse. He is really in love with, his, with her olive skin and like her dark hair. She has very prominent features. She's kind of like a raw Capri beauty she's only 17 years old at this stage she's got greek ancestry and something that's really cool that i read on wikipedia is that she is supposedly a descendant of barbarossa so you know she's got that touch of exoticism and i hate the word exotic because when you call someone exotic i think it's kind of rude because what am i am i a zoo animal creature am i a komodo dragon but anyway, uh, let's bear in mind that this was the end of the 19th century. It's fine. So in Sargent's first painting of Rosina Ferrara, you can see her um, mimicking a twisted olive tree, which is kind of his way of showcasing her as part of the, as part of nature, as part of being one with nature and the raw beauty of Capri with the trees and the water and the elements. And during that summer, Sargent actually painted dozens of portraits of Rosina. And this is why people speculate that they actually had a love affair all that summer. It was a very, very short lived one though, because at the end of the summer, he packed his bags, went back to Paris with his portrait skills being over the top and started making other portraits and, and forgot about her. And she carried on modelling. She modelled for other um, artists and she ended up marrying one of them, George Randolph Bass. And I think before she married him, because she met him in Rome, she had already um, had a child and no one really knew who the father was. My instinct is that it was probably one of the painters that painted her. Um, it just seems, it seemed like the most plausible thing. Because she spent, if you've ever had your portrait painted, I haven't, but I can imagine that it would take a few hours. So if someone paints a few portraits of you, very likely spending a lot of your time with them. So I think something probably happened there. And especially um, since the priests on Capri were telling all the young girls and ladies not to model for the artist because they have a reputation for being a bit promiscuous. So she got pregnant, she had a child, and then she married this other American artist, Bass. And he moved her to America, to this little like village called Cato Cantona? Catona in New York. She then died of pneumonia in 1934 and four years later he committed suicide allegedly because he was so in love with her and he could never get over her. So a very sad story in the end. 
but we still have all of her beautiful portraits and I thought you know what she's got style <laughs> in a lot of the portraits she's dancing around she's singing she oh I don't know if she's singing I, I imagine she is she's just having fun and you can see her smile actually and in this time period I haven't seen many pictures if any um, of people smiling in these portraits so it was nice to see her smile that's really cute even though in the end I imagine she lived a sad life I don't know being used by artists she probably wasn't even paid for it I don't know I kind of get the idea that she was treated more of like a like a prostitute I'm allowed to say that I don't know but she was everyone's news because she was so beautiful and she seemed like a really lovely girl anyway that's all I have for you today. I hope that you enjoyed this little introduction to John Singer Sargent. Next time, I will talk about Madame X. I hope you enjoy the lookbook and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.